All right, you guys, welcome to a new video. I wanted to, in this video, talk about longevity and health in general, but really its role in the pursuit of longevity, long life, and, um, you know, longevity is something that, in here in the material world, the average person thinks that to reach 80 or 90 is longevity. And that may be true to some extent, considering the fact that most people don't make it that far. In my opinion, based on my own experiences with the Kundalini energy, higher states of consciousness, as well as, you know, hours of research, I've come to the conclusion that 80 to 90 years old is actually kind of just beginning to scrape the iceberg. The fact that we live so long, ladies and gentlemen, which really isn't that long, you know, 60 to 70 years the average person lives. But the, the considering that these pe considering the average person lives that long with all of the pollution and the bad food that they're eating is really an amazing feat in my opinion. This body lives a fairly long amount of time for how much junk we're constantly putting in it as well as exposing it to. Our bodies are incredibly patient and forgiving for how hard we are on them. And, you know, through higher states of consciousness, I've realized and discovered that we can live past 100. Uh, past 150, upwards of more than 200 years old. And I know that may sound crazy to the average person, but if it does sound crazy to you, it's probably your programming talking. The average person believes with every fiber of his or her being that the it's very rare for a human to live past 100. Now if you've watched my previous videos where I've talked about the power of the subconscious mind and the power of thinking and things like that you'll come to the conclusion or you will have realized ladies and gentlemen that whenever you believe something with every fiber of your being it sends that information into the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind now starts to create your reality based on the information that you fed it. So if you're continuing to feed your subconscious mind information that is non-beneficial to your growth, to your health, to your longevity, if you feed that information into your subconscious mind that you won't live past 100 or that it's rare to live uh, you know, past 90 or 60 or 70, then you will actually start creating your reality because your beliefs create your reality, ladies and gentlemen. Anything that affects the subconscious mind, you'll have to excuse me the windows. I apologize for that. A anytime you believe something with every fiber of your being, your reality is created based on that information because your subconscious mind is basically your genie. It takes information, it's impartial to good and bad, and it creates your reality based on that. So it's a much more expansive and complicated subject than just, you know, the definition that I just gave you. Obviously, the subconscious mind is such a vast um, subject, but I'm trying to keep things simple because I don't want to keep you here for the next three hours. But I do recommend reading about the subconscious mind and looking more, looking into it more so that you can understand how your thoughts and your beliefs are creating the circumstances in your life, whether they're good or bad. So just to wrap things up about the subconscious mind before we continue, if you believe that you're not going to live past 100, and you think that it's a very rare thing and only a few people get lucky to live past 100, then you create that reality. There are people in this world that can do things that science would consider impossible based on the fact that their beliefs have been altered so that they don't get afflicted by things like uh, the heat of fire. There are people who can melt metal objects with their mind. There are people who can do things that are considered impossible because their beliefs are different. Now you may be saying, oh, it's just easy to change. If it was so easy, all I have to do is say I don't believe in something. I should be able to achieve anything I want just by saying that, or believing that I, my, excuse me. A lot of people say, well, if this is true, Brandon, then shouldn't I just be able to achieve anything I want based on the fact that I don't believe in it anymore? The problem is, is that even people who think that they don't believe in something anymore, that's restricting when people people who think that they just stopped believing in something that's restricting or holding them back people who believe that 
they just stopped believing it one day because they chose to, they're wrong because the beliefs go deeper than just your conscious recognition. They go into the subconscious mind, they go into the unconscious mind and the multiple layers of the psyche. These beliefs and whatnot have to be purged out and we do that through a handful of different things over time. It takes patience, it takes diligence, and it takes dedication, but we purge negative beliefs and negative thought forms and things that are confining our life through our mind. We do that through a through magic, essentially. Magic exposes us to our unconscious, as well as our conscious and subconscious programming. It shows us the, the errors in our psyche that we've cultivated over the years. And magic is not the, you know, I'm not talking about pulling hat, bunnies out of hats. I'm talking about magic. Magic is the art of so many different things, but in layman's terms, we can define magic as the art of controlled thinking to obtain a physical result. We can also consider magic the art of deliberately entering states of heightened consciousness, elevated consciousness, and entering the realm of spirit and bringing that into our conscious life through repetition. What I mean by that is that in magic, ladies and gentlemen, you are altering your consciousness through rituals and things like that. Rituals are symbolic. They affect the conscious mind. And if you're doing particular rituals, um, excuse me, whenever someone walks by, it kind of throws me off because it's like all of a sudden there's someone in my sphere. Um, I don't really want to try to define magic in this video. I've talked about that briefly in previous videos. There's a difference between esoteric magic and practical magic. I talked about that in the Learning the Magical the Art series. I need to make a video completely defining what magic is because there's so many different ways that we can de de define it because magic is used for so many different things. Magic essentially is like the yoga of the West. It's the art and science of not only obtaining what you need in life and getting your life situated and having a comfortable life based on you know, using spell work and meditations and things like that. It's the art and science of controlled thought to obtain a physical result. And we do that through reprogramming the subconscious mind with symbols and in rituals we use scents and sounds and all sorts of different stimulus to alter our minds so that we can stimulate these deep layers of our psyche that are connected to spirit. And by connecting to spirit, we can bring that into our conscious recognition and use it as fuel during our spell work or our, you know, whatever we're trying to achieve. I hope that makes sense. I really do. I don't have time to go back and make another video. I'm trying to define things that aren't really easy to define. But, um, I should probably get away from that, you guys. I don't want to make another video just kind of babbling about those subjects, but we, what I was getting at is that you, you have to learn to shed your beliefs in order to experience really great health because we have so many beliefs that have been given to us by family and friends and we've cultivated beliefs through the culture that we live in. By the time we are 10 years old, we cultivated the majority of our beliefs that we are now currently living with, even un even though it's unconscious. We don't really realize that the belief patterns that we cultivated and obtained by age 10 are still with us in our adult years. Those same beliefs that we molded about what reality is and our place in life and what life means and our limiting beliefs that we cultivated as well as our expansive beliefs, beliefs that bring us benefit in life. Those were usually molded largely, 90, 80 to 90 percent of those beliefs were molded by age 10 and they're still afflicting us or affecting us in our adult life whether they be good or bad. So magic essentially is so many different things but you can use it especially in tandem with the lunar cycles becoming aware of the lunar cycles and working lunar magic can help you really start purging the negative aspects of your psyche so that you can really by you can dissolve the aspects of negative aspects of your psyche um, excuse me magic can show you how your mind is set up to work against you and it offers not only an exposure to that but it offers you a solution out of it because it teaches you how to rebuild your mind so we'll get into that in the near future ladies and gentlemen I just needed to talk about beliefs because beliefs and longevity go hand in hand because we have a culture of people who subconsciously believe that they can't live past 100 unless they get really lucky and even if you believe that oh I could live past 100 you know it's usually not a firm belief. Most people, when they try to change their beliefs, they can't really get a grasp on a new belief. 
it's very difficult because some of these most of these beliefs have been cultivated and nurtured over time and the culture that we live in actually helps keep our beliefs alive like throwing fire on wood so to speak it's very difficult to change your beliefs when you have doctors and teachers and establishments and parents and friends saying that oh it's you know you you know, it's really rare to live past 100. Some people can do it, but it, most people can't. You have a culture that venerates these belief systems that are toxic. So my, what, I, what I've learned from the Kundalini energy, which is essentially just heightened states of consciousness, Kundalini energy is basically what, it's a form, it, it's essentially enlightenment, but it takes the lower self and bridges it with the higher self. And you can see into the multiple different dimensions. You can communicate with the ancestors and spirits. Essentially, you're communicating with your higher self, your God self. But what I learned through that is that anything is possible, regardless of how crazy it's, it seems. I'm talking about being able to fly, breathe underwater. There's some things here that may agitate a response in you when you hear them because they sound crazy because we live in a culture that has really seeked to separate us from our psychic powers and our more super normal or paranormal super... Uh, extraordinary um, aspects of us. I hope that makes sense. I did not get a lot of sleep last night, ladies and gentlemen, so I apologize if I sound kind of uh, loopy. But this culture seeks to create beliefs in people that restrict them from being who the limitless individuals that they actually are. Heightened states of consciousness, heightened states of kundalini consciousness will show you that life is absolutely magical and that we have no restrictions. But the beliefs are really what have us by the balls, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm trying to inspire people to contemplate their beliefs. And we do that through critical self-analysis. And I talked about that in the first and second installment of the Learning the Magical Arts series. But So learn to listen to your beliefs. Really question your beliefs. Sit down and write down your beliefs. Have you ever really done that? We have to learn to purge old beliefs that were largely put into us by external environment stimulus and we have to create new beliefs that are beneficial to our growth i don't believe for an, an a tiny fraction of a second that the human being is limited to about 110 years old which i believe the longest lived individuals between 11, 108 and 116 years old and those are just the people that we've been told about there are countless stories of Taoist masters enlightened sages um herbalists, um, monks, uh, hermits, mystics, magicians, you name it, who lived past 150 years old. A lot of people think it's just about the health thing. A lot of people think that they can get to 110 years old just by eating health food and, and, and remaining positive. I think that that's true. I'm not going to lie. I think that you can do great things just by trying to take care of your hardware and the basic aspects of your mind. But in order to achieve amazing longevity, we have to not only take care of our health physically through taking things like herbs like ginseng or consuming gynostemma, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But we also have to, ladies and gentlemen, we also have to penetrate deeper than that. And we have to purge ourselves of the layers of our psyche that are destroying our health by aligning our reality with our beliefs. Now our beliefs are creating our reality around us and it's actually creating our, in my opinion, our death as well. We are aligning ourselves with our death because we believe certain beliefs that are, like, such as aging, that are accelerating our, our death and things like that. Now again, it may sound crazy that aging is a belief that makes you age, but it is, ladies and gentlemen. There are states of consciousness that anyone can, you know, with enough patience and hard work can enter where you can see that aging is just a program. It's a belief. And I'm not saying that as you progress throughout the years and, you know, you do get older, quote unquote, that your body won't change its appearance, but Aging is a myth, ladies and gentlemen. I know that sounds crazy, but our beliefs create it. This is how programmed we've become. And the average person is so programmed in, in love with his or her belief systems that are so 
backwards and non-beneficial that he or she will fight, kick, and scream to defend his or her programming, even though it's accelerating his or her premature death or demise or illness or disease. We were taught at a very young age how to think, how to feel, how to react, how to believe, even how to breathe. And it's non-beneficial. We need to regain mastery of our minds and our bodies, our emotions. And there's a handful of different ways to do that, and I seek to try to discuss those in detail here on this channel. I'm still to a large extent learning. I'm not saying I'm perfect. It's not an easy thing to completely reprogram yourself. A lot of people think they've achieved it, but they're lying to you. Reprogramming takes years of dedication. It, it took years of, of programming. Um, it took years to accumulate these programs. It's going to take it's going to take hard work and dedicated effort to remove them and it's, it's dedicated effort because most people don't want to undertake a long lengthy process of critical self-analysis they don't want to look at the faults in their own thinking processes most people don't want to become aware of the errors in their own mind the errors in their own program their errors in their daily life most people have an ego complex that is so inflated that to actually undertake these um, purgings and to really to, to work magic and to reprogram yourself and to become a greater human to stimulate your higher self requires so much critical self analysis and dedicated um, work that the average person won't ever be interested in doing it because it, it threatens the continuity of the ego's hold over your um, uh, over your daily life through your conscious mind So now that we've got that out of the way, you guys, I want to talk about the fact that, you know, a while back I made a video about ritualistically reprogramming your mind, your subconscious mind with a tea ritual. I hope that you guys who are new on the Patreon page or people who haven't seen my older videos, go back and try to watch as many as you can. Um, I've, I've, I've watched some of my older content and I can see how I've evolved some of my older content and I go back and watch and it's like, wow, I seemed kind of, uh, you know, a lot different than I do now. Life is a constant state of evolution, but there's still, in some of those older videos, even though my approach may be different now, there's still gems in those videos, I believe. You know, even though in some of my older videos I was a lot an more angry, I was cussing, I've changed a lot, I've mellowed out, but there's still a lot of good information in those videos that I think can help you if you go back and watch them. Um, but some of the older videos, like my video on ritualistically reprogramming your mind with a tea ritual, that is so beneficial. You've got to have a tea ritual. You've got to. You've got to be consuming longevity teas, ladies and gentlemen, as you go through these processes. If you're interested in reprogramming your mind, you, you've got to take care of your health while you're doing it. Uh, you can reprogram your mind to a large extent by taking care of your health because as you get healthier if you put the right food in your system it'll actually cause your mind to expand and once your mind starts expanding you naturally will start questioning certain thoughts and things and beliefs that you harbor that you some people if you're sensitive to energy enough that can happen some people aren't sensitive to energy and it might take a little bit more digging um, to start questioning your beliefs and your thoughts but uh, regardless of whether you're interested in reprogramming your thoughts and beliefs or whether you just want to take care basic care of your health, you've got to take, you've got to have a tea ritual. You want to go get yourself a nice teapot, make it special, make it magical. Set some time out on a weekend or a weekday and go find a nice little teapot and get yourself some quality teas. It's really beneficial to drink tea because it not only soothes the mind and the body, but it delivers valuable nutrition. Um, here on your journey to help you, you know, reach greater states of physical health. We need tools in order to become, in order to attain longevity, ladies and gentlemen, we need the right tools. And tea is one of, tea in general is a great tool to use. Incorporating it into a ritual where you use meditation while you drink the tea is even more beneficial. Go back and watch that video. I'll put a link on the, in the description box for those who are interested in going back and watching it. You want to make sure that you're consuming the right teas, though. Teas that have been 
pro shown to not only invigorate the body but invigorate the mind. You, if you're interested in reprogramming your mind, you need foods and fuels that will help act as fuel to help you along that path. So ginseng is one of those tools, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm in no way, shape, or form saying that this is the best quality ginseng on the market because it's not. Real ginseng can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars because ginseng, in order for it to have a large amount of ginsenicides, the beneficial constituents in the ginseng, in order for them to become very bioactive, the ginseng has to reach a state of maturity that takes years and years and years to develop. Quality ginseng is years old, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is just some $5 ginseng. Nowadays, Costco sells this stuff. You can find this at Asian markets. This is instant ginseng. And even though it's not the greatest stuff on the market, in my opinion, it does produce a calm state of mind that's invigorated and ginseng increases energy ladies and gentlemen it increases sexual stamina which is great for kundalini if you know how to control the heightened sexual energy a lot of these herbs ladies and gentlemen work on the sexual energy in your body um, they invigorate the um, reproductive organs and they just bring life back into your system through largely to a large extent your sex organs your glandular system your blood your kidneys some of these herbs like schizandra and ginseng can be aphrodisiac. They can make you st sexually stimulated. And in the right hands, if you can control that sexual energy and keep it inside of your system, this can be very valuable for longevity and stimulating the kundalini. And we'll talk about that in the near future. But ginseng, you guys, this is instant ginseng. ginseng. This is American ginseng, which in my opinion, based on my research, seems to be some of the best. Uh, you just open this and put it in hot or cold water and let it dissolve and drink it. Um, gynostemma. Gynostemma is considered longevity grass. There are parts of the world where some of the longest lived people live that they drink this daily. It's, it's uh, a member of the squash family and it's called Gynostemma pentaphyllum. It's got a leaf that looks like a pentagram. Um, it grows like a vine. It has a vast array of nutritional constituents that are absolutely magical. It grows like a weed. It's a very simple thing to grow. Um, it has a, it's a beautiful plant. It has a numerous, it's used heavily in certain parts of the world, such as in traditional Chinese medicine, which is interesting because gynostemma hasn't really become popular in traditional Chinese medicine until the last 100 to 120 years, but it's used in traditional Chinese medicine to invigorate the body, um, to bring balance to the mind, to bring calm to the mind. It's used to um, often to help people who are going through chemotherapy because it boosts the immune system and it's consumed daily as a tonic in certain parts of the world because it is so valuable in high nutritional constituents. It has four particular compounds in it that are almost identical, if not identical to ginseng. And these are powerful alkaloids, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the alkaloids of the beneficial constituents in ginseng are known as ginsenicides, and the ones in gynostemma are known as gypenicides, and there are over 60 of them. This stuff is absolutely magical, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the greatest gynostemma in the world. You can find this at Asian markets for $7.99, at least in California, and you get 100 packets. But regardless, I drink it. Even though it doesn't have some fancy organic sticker on this, this is just kind of lesser quality gynostemma and that's why it's cheap it's leaves and uh, you know stems and stuff like that but it's it's still great I consume three to six cups of this a day and when I can't afford it I'll consume two to three cups of the spring dragon longevity tea from dragon herbs that I talk about here on the patreon page um, from again dragon herbs and that is a mixture of gynostemma and five different very powerful tonic herbs of the traditional Chinese medicine system Shizandra, Holongo, Lyceum, uh, Astragalus, I think I said that already maybe not again I didn't get enough sleep last night ladies and gentlemen I apologize but um, they take in spring dragon longevity tea they take gynostemma leaves and they take those herbs and they turn them into an extract the Shizandra and the Hoangho and whatnot. They turn them into an extract and it becomes a syrup and then they dump that syrup over the gynostemma leaves and now you have gynostemma leaves that are infused with herbal extracts. And if you watch my previous or recent video here on the uh, Patreon page about extracts, you'll know that extracted herbs are usually the best kind of herbs. 
But again, $7.99 for this, 100 bags, three to six cups of this a day. Amazing stuff for cheap, ladies and gentlemen. Ginseng and Gynostemma and Shizandra and Snow Lotus and Shistanch and um, you know Reishi Mushroom and Chaga Mushroom. Uh, there's so many different things. Long Gone Fruit. Traditional Chinese medicine is where it's at for longevity, ladies and gentlemen. You need to be consuming some herbs. But longevity, you guys, is really important. You've got to take care of what you're eating. You've got to, you've got to really be conscious of what you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. But in unison with that, you have to be almost more conscious of what you're thinking, believing, and feeling. And this is where many people out here, are, many of the people out here preaching health are not preaching it from the perspective of you know, tapping into the mind, the subconscious mind and restructuring the beliefs. A lot of people are just talking about the importance of diet. And although that's critically important, diet is indeed fuel, ladies and gentlemen. The beneficial compounds in foods lift our bodies up, lift our minds up. They nourish the kidneys, they nourish the lungs, the liver, the, the cells. Certain foods increase the amount of production of neurons in the brain and lead to what's known as neurogenesis, which is the proliferation of new neurons. And neurons are the basic building block, the compositional building blocks of the brain. When you lose neurons, when you lose proper neurological activity, you lose c proper cognition and you start inviting in things like senility, premature Alzheimer's and things like that. You've got to take care of your brain. You've got to take care of your bones. You've got to take care of your blood. You've got to be consuming herbs on a day-to-day -day basis. You need to be consuming things that are uplifting your body. Now, unfortunately, we live in a matrix where many of the foods on the market, even the health food, have been chemically altered, hybridized, genetically engineered, spliced, filled full of different pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides, insecticides, the foods that these the the soil that these foods are grown in are nine times out of ten grown in or the I wanted to personally thank you for watching my videos and contributing to the growth of my channel. I could not do this without you. And your interest in my content is truly what motivates me and fuels my passion for making these videos and spreading my message. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to remind you that this channel is a free educational tool that is listener supported. And if you would like to donate to my channel and donate to my cause, help make my life a little bit easier and help keep the lights on around here, you can do so by checking out the links in the description box below. There's a handful of not only ways to donate to my channel, but I also have links to different websites and different videos of mine, as well as my Amazon store, where you can check out a handful, a plethora of different health-related products that I use and recommend. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for your continued interest in my message and until next time, peace be with you all.